Hello, and welcome to my lab report. I'm Robert Pig, and today we will be discussing lab two, which is about charge. For this lab, I had to perform an experiment where I would charge pieces of tape with the goal of deducing the electrical force from the tape, as well as exploring Coulomb's law. After completing the experiment, I had to use GlowScript to create a program that models the circumstances of the experiment. From there, I will compare the model and my observations. Initially, I had difficulties creating the model and properly following Coulomb's law and the principle of superposition. However, after going back through my code with my notes in hand, I was able to effectively model the charge strips and determine the magnitude of their charge, which I found to be approximately 3.77 times 10 to the negative ninth coulombs. The structure of the rest of this lab report is going to go as so. First, I will talk about setting up the lab. From there, I will show the results of the lab. Based on these results, I will present my computational model and compare it with reality. After that, I will answer some thought-provoking questions, and then lastly, some final thoughts and conclusions. To perform the experiment and determine the charge of the tape, I needed the following materials. The video on this slide shows how I charge the tape by ripping one strip off of another. Using these charge strips, the measurements below, and a ruler, I was able to determine the effect of one strip on another by using the setup and the photo on the left. My first step in creating the model was to put in constants such as K and G. Then, by writing a function that generates a series of point charges, I created the models of the tape strips. Representing them as a series of charges, as opposed to a single point charge, is closer to reality, and so models the situation better. Top tape is the tape that floated, and bottom tape is the tape I held. From there, I created a function that calculates the E-field of a point charge. Then, I wrote a loop that went through all of the point charge's E-fields and summed them using the principle of superposition in Newton's second law. Using this, I was able to calculate the total force on the tape due to the bottom tape and compare it to the force of gravity. That resulted in this photo, which shows the effects on the top tape due to each charge in the bottom tape, both individually and summed. When summed, the electric force, represented by the biggest upward arrow, exactly counteracted the force of gravity, which is the downward pointing arrow. This makes sense because in the experiment, the top tape floated. Thus, it was motionless, so according to Newton's second law, the total force must be zero, which is true. In order for this to be true, Q had to be approximately 3.77 times 10 to the negative ninth, which is what my model found to be the charge of the tape. And now, for some interesting questions. The first question is, what if you had modeled each of your tapes as a single point charge, like in the previous lab? And the second question is, why do these estimates differ? Which value is more likely to be closer to the real value, and why? If I had modeled the tape as a single point charge, then the result would be less accurate, as the charge tape more closely resembles a series of point charges than a single point charge. If modeled as a single point charge, the Q found is 5.4261 times 10 to the negative ninth coulombs, as opposed to the approximate 3.77 times 10 to the ninth coulombs found when modeled as a series. Because the series is a better representation of reality, the Q value found using that method is more accurate. And now for some final thoughts and conclusions. I enjoyed this lab, especially modeling the tape. I think this lab contributed to my understanding of superposition, and so will help me throughout the semester. I hope you enjoyed my lab. Thanks for watching.